Hey everybody, it's Hayden here. Welcome to day 30 of Top Dogtober. It's finally come to an end. Of course, we've got tomorrow's one, which we're not going to talk about because looking at the votes, it's not looking very promising for me. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Anyway, moving on. Let's get started with today's lesson. But before I do that, just remind you one final time, if you're enjoying these lessons, if you love the way we deliver content, then you should check out our 11 plus preparation resources on our website where you can access English verbal reasoning, maths, non-verbal reasoning lessons every single week, really premium level lessons that come with homework tasks and homework walkthroughs as well. So if the answers aren't enough, then you can watch us explain how to solve every single question. Now, the best bit is if you use a discount code, either vote Hayden or vote Dylan, because Top Dog Tober is coming to an end here, I'm even going to promote Dylan's, I'll be nice, then you will get yourself 15% off of our annual price. It's worth doing. All right, guys, let's get started. So yesterday, day 29, Dylan left you with this one. It was a really cool anagram question where one letter is missing from the anagram. Of course, in this one, the sentence says, for what I received, this meal was far too pricey. We were missing the C from pricey when we unscrambled that anagram, which is why C is the answer. Okay, shape nets. We thought we'd leave the horrible one to last. This is widely regarded as the hardest spatial reasoning question type. It's the one that we most often get comments from. People saying, please, can you do a video on nets? They're not very nice. So nets obviously can be for any 3D shape. You might, you're most likely to see cube nets like we've got here. Um, this is a very common cube net that you'll see. So a net, just to make it really clear, is, a, is the 2D unfolded version of a 3D shape. If we folded this up, like you can see in the animation here, then of course it will make a cube. Now, this one would also work. This is a less common um, 2D net for a cube, but there's actually quite a lot. You should Google it. There's actually, I think, I can't remember how many, maybe seven, maybe nine um, different types of nets that will fold together and make a cube. But that doesn't mean it'll only be cubes in your test. It could be in the 11 plus that they decide to introduce a square based pyramid or, a, I don't know, some sort of prism and you've got to unfold the net of that. It could be anything. But today we're just going to focus on cube nets. I'm going to show you three different strategies that will help you get better at these, okay, across the three different questions. Let's do it. So the first strategy, first of all, what we have to do is pick the shape, pick the 3D shape that would be formed when this is folded. Four of them can be proven to be incorrect. And one of them is left and therefore can be created when this is folded up. So first thing I always do is I just, without even thinking about folding, is I try to use logic to get rid of any answers that just don't make sense straight away. For example, quite clearly, the edge between this dot and these circles here shows us that the dot is really close to the two circles, okay? The dot's not on the far side, like this end of the square, which would be further away from the circle, like in A. Therefore, I can prove that A is wrong. I can prove that C is wrong as well. Do you see that, guys? The, the, the dot is too far away from the edge, which joins it with the, the face with the circles on it. So straight away, I've managed to get rid of two answers just from a bit of logic. Okay, and if there's any other logic that jumps out at you, then great, you can do that as well. Um, okay, so next thing. To understand how these faces will interact when folded, I want you to think about this point right here. I want you to just imagine with me, okay, that this edge of this face and this edge of this face, they're folding down into a cube. Now, what would happen is these two edges would actually end up touching, wouldn't they, if you think about it. If this was kind of the top, all right, and this was a side that's Push, that's going down and this was a side that's going down those two edges marked in red would touch that's useful information for us because it means that even on the 2d view we can actually just draw in what it would look like when they were touching so if i just draw in a square here now this square is representing the, the top one here but imagining that this edge has come down to meet it which means i'm going to have to rotate this 90 degrees because that's what it would look like when the edge was pulled round to meet at this middle part here. So if this was rotated, then this arrow would no longer be here, it would be around here. And this one would be here. So that's what they're gonna look like when they touch. We're gonna see the two arrows kind of pointing into the corners of the face that has the circles on it, just like you do in A. Now, unfortunately, we've already got rid of A, but that's a really good example of exactly what that will look like when those two edges touch. So then I can now get rid of B because I've got those arrows there, but I don't have the circles on the face at the top. And I can also get rid of E now because the arrows are facing the wrong way. Whereas D perfectly fits 
what we've just described. Now, when we get to the point where we've only got one left, we can circle it and move on. So my first tip there is, if you want to move a face to see what it would look like in the 2D version, and how it interacts with another one, you can actually almost just pick it up, you can rotate it 90 degrees every time you move along. And we can keep doing it if you wanted to. So if that rotates 90 degrees to get here, and we get the arrow like that and like that, if we rotated it again and we wanted to see how it interacted with this bottom one, then the arrows would be facing like this and like this, which actually completely makes sense because look, the left arrow is kind of pointing to the dot. The left arrow is kind of pointing to the dot. So that's the first tip. You can rotate um, faces around the edge of your 2D shape 90 degrees at a time, almost like it's rolling like a square wheel around it to see what it would look like when it interacts with the edge of another face. That's tip number one. Already quite hard, I know. Sorry, guys. Um, tip number two. Um, first of all, I tell you what. Pause. Have a go first. See if you can solve it. I've got a different tip for you, but I'm, you know, have a little go. Pause the video. Come back when you want to see me explain it. So my second tip is all about opposites. Knowing where the opposite faces are in on cubes. Because obviously, if you look at a cube, this face would be opposite to the face behind here. Okay, they're just opposite. They never touch. They don't interact. None of their edges touch each other. Now, we can identify what the opposites are on a net as well because the opposites are ones that are two apart. So I'm going to mark this A and this A. They're opposites. And the two Bs that I've marked are also opposites because they are two, exactly two apart in a straight line. So we can use that fact to now get rid of answers. Watch this. So I know that, uh, let's think about this. Ah, here we are. B can't work. Because look, we've got the triangle face and the arrow and they're interacting with this edge and we know that they are opposites, so that can't be true. It happens again in C with the two A's. We can't have this line and this square interacting with a face uh, by touching with the edges. So we can get rid of that one as well. The same happens again with D. Look, we've got the two that we've marked as B once again uh, touching. So I've managed to get rid of three answers just by using the logic of opposites alone okay now we can use some other logic so if let's go back to the starting point which i never actually did on this one and just use normal logic so i can get rid of a because of this reason Are you ready i can see that this edge here is the same as this edge here when i'm looking at this face with the line on it yeah you can all see that and on my 2d net quite clearly the, the face that's below that edge is this triangle yeah on a we've got this arrow i know that shouldn't be there I know that actually it should have been a triangle like that. So A is also wrong, leaving me, with, leaving me with only one answer, which is E. But before we move on, I just want to really prove it to you using the last tip from the last question, which is if I rotated this uh, edge face here all the way up to see how it interacts with the right-hand side of the arrow, which is this face right here, this edge, sorry, then this is what I'd do. I'll rotate it once, 90 degrees. If I Imagine I'm just rolling it like a wheel. This corner is the pivot point and it's coming across, then the black square would be here now. And that would be my face. And if I rotated it one more time in my mind, again, this is now the pivot point. I'm thinking, where would it go next? The black square would end up here if I rotated it one. So the black square is kind of on the, on the bottom hand side of the arrow, far away. Bottom hand side of the arrow, far away. It makes sense. So when you practice these skills, you can actually do them quite quickly. You can really quickly imagine what a face would look like. You just rotate it 90 degrees twice because you're moving it up. You can think about the opposites and you can use normal logic as well to solve them. And they don't, they're not as hard as you think. It just takes a bit of practice. So here's another one. The net is a bit different this time. As you can see, we've got a slightly different looking net, but that's okay. We can still use the rule of opposites. And actually, if you think about it, this one, even though there's nothing on it, just to prove a point. If this one rotated down here, obviously it'd still be nothing. That still counts as being two away from the triangle. This one and this one would be opposite. So opposite the triangle should be blank, okay? But anyway, I've got a new tip for this one when we get to it. I'm gonna let you guys have a go at the question first though. Off you go. So my last tip, my last little rule here is that when it becomes a 3D shape, you could carry on, You could, if you were walking around the shape, you would just walk forever and ever, right? Because the edges all meet and then you can just go around and around and around like a sphere would be. You just, you just keep walking around the face of it. Which means that even on a 2D shape, even though it looks like this is the end, 
it's not really the end, is it? Because actually this edge will end up wrapping around and touching this edge. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah, they will actually touch. And what that means is it allows us to, to play on this logic because if we want to think about how these two down here interact with this top one, rather than trying to do loads of rotating around the edges and all that stuff from the previous tips, I can just take this top face and I can just redraw it down here because I know that's where it touches anyway. And then my same logic applies. I'll just ignore it up here. I'll get rid of it for now. Okay, and think of it down here instead. So that's interesting. So we know that the semicircle interacts with the cross, the plus, just like it does in A. Okay, so that's good. Um, let's see if we can get rid of any other ones. Unfortunately, it doesn't, doesn't allow us to get rid of any others. But what else can we do? Well, let's use our tip from, num from the first question and rotate this triangle down. So if that was rotating down 90 degrees, then of course it would then be pointing this way. All right, so imagining the triangle's upside down, so my left and right are backwards, to the right of the triangle, when it's pointing upwards, we've got the plus. So when it's pointing upwards, to the right of the triangle, we've got the plus. We don't have a plus here, it should be there, okay? So we can get rid of B. To the right of the triangle should be the plus. It's not there either, it's in the wrong place. Uh, let's think about this one. To the right of the triangle should be the plus, it's not there. To the right of the triangle should be the plus, it's not there. Oh my days, guys, we just got rid of all four answers from one piece of logic. So therefore, A should be the answer. There it is, look, there's the triangle to the, the plus, sorry, to the right of the triangle. And final bit of proof, just to really sink it in. If I was to rotate it one more time, 90 degrees down, and then the triangle would actually be pointing this way. So we know that the triangle points directly at the base of the semicircle, which it does in A, that's precisely right. And actually you can see that even in D and in E, once again, it doesn't do the right thing. So there's loads of ways to tackle these questions. You just need to get confident at those three tips, guys. So when you're tackling this one here, I want you to think about opposites. I want you to think about how you can move shapes up and down by rotating the 90 degrees. Um, and I want you to think about how you can take the top one and put it at the bottom or the bottom one put it at the top, knowing that this edge and this edge will interact with each other. Good stuff. Anyway, guys, I'll leave that question with you and uh, I guess we'll solve it in our last day, which is tomorrow where one of us, I wonder who, will be eating loads of hot stuff and probably crying on camera. So yeah, do come back for that. See you guys. Have a good one.